Hey there, so if you're joining me from the short that I did, welcome back to the full video. If you just stumbled upon this video and you're checking it out, welcome also. Some of it may be repetitive if you already watched the, the quick short introduction. For those that haven't, I will repeat some stuff, so bear with me. Today I'm going to be lifting this 40 foot high cube shipping container. Kind of sits in a low spot here when I had it delivered and then I kind of had Phil brought in around it and the water tends to collect there in the spring when the snow melts and it's kind of sitting in a puddle. Even though these things are rated to be watertight and and, you know rodent proof and all these things pest proof it still gets moisture condensation inside in the spring and I'm attributing it to sitting in the puddle you know I'll, I'll open it up and anything that was cardboard touching the floor is pretty dang damp and and just kind of musty so I'm gonna lift it up and set it on some railroad ties that's the plan anyways I have not done this before so we'll see how it goes you can see I have a, a pretty hefty jack there so there's the house jack it's rated at 20,000 tons or 40,000 pounds this container weighs 8,000 70 empty it is as I mentioned in the short maybe didn't see that anything but empty it's pretty pretty full but nowhere near you know 20 tons probably not even five tons so then I've dug out a little clearance hole to drop the jack down in there it's gonna jack it up hopefully as the intention anyways and then uh, put some railroad ties underneath there and we'll go down to the other end and then basically repeat that you know I've got my railroad ties somewhat roughly in position already I'm gonna you know flip that road fabric underneath and stuff like that before so get a little some of the details that you may or may not have to deal with if you were to try to do this and then on the back side I'm calling the end without the doors the back side I guess it's all orientation subjective this side already has kind of a clearance built into the design I'm hoping that that's not going to pinch shut well I, I know it's going to pinch a little bit but it's it's already a few inches bigger than it needs to be to accommodate the jack and if I close it up enough that the jack doesn't fit I'll just dig a little out there again and then uh, put the railroad ties underneath set it down hopefully uh, relatively level doesn't have to be perfect in fact a little off is not bad to let water drain off the top that's planned so I'll get the jack in the hole all right so we'll get this beast in the hole pretty, pretty heavy all right sitting pretty flat got it centered all the way up against the container let's see if we can jack it up and see how that goes Well, it's lifting up a little bit, but I'll tell you what, it takes some oomph to to get that thing, that jack to go. And I think once it gets kind of up to a tipping point, it'll go, it'll go better. I think it's only going about an eighth of an inch at a time, so... But I hear it click each time and I see gap underneath there. So it's gonna take a little bit to do it. These jacks are, I believe it's for lifting houses and stuff that have settled over many years. And you know, they usually recommend that you just give it like one crank a day, which is about an eighth inch and let everything kind of resettle and reshape and then give it a crank the next day. And it can be a lengthy process, you know, so you don't do some structural damage or have things going too fast so so I'll keep at this until I got it lifted up and then we'll we'll show you how it goes I won't make you sit here and watch me crank it each time <laughs> it's gonna take a little while I think got myself a big old piece of pipe from a collapsed dilapidated fence and man it's a breeze now I mean let's see you get to watch it go up and down here I mean, I barely even, before I was balancing everything I had on it, now it's just going. Smarter, not harder, as they say. You can see it moving. We're done with this in no time with this pipe. Unless we have a jack failure. 
I think this is going to work out pretty good. And I've been wanting to do this for a few years now. I think I got this container set here in 2018. It's now 2023 and also five years. September will be five years, September, October. Got it kind of at the end of the season right before the snow started flying and then filled in around after. And it's just never been a priority, you know, whenever anyone's been here with any type of equipment that we could try to lift it with we kind of did other stuff and then after the fact went oh yeah we were gonna and it just never happened but look at that i mean amazing now one thing i'm not sure about is i'm not sure if lifting it in the center like that as i am is the best that's why i have doors closed to make sure you know that i i don't sense any flexing or distorting of it there or anything so one th another thing I messed up on is I put the shovel inside <laughs> I wish I didn't do that so I kind of want to carve this out here and yeah wow well, that's that's probably that's probably almost ready to receive that thing so I push it in from the end Couple more, maybe. It's amazing how easy a job can be with the right tools. I don't know, this might not be the right tool for for everybody, but for my situation and DIY and not having heavy enough equipment to lift this, it's, you know, this is getting it done for me. Check this one off the list finally, it'll be fantastic. Man, I wish I could get <laughs> my shovel. I just carved that out. But I think a few more jacks and I'll be in business here. A few more clicks. I also wouldn't mind sticking uh, sticking one across the front. Because I have put my truck in here in the past. But I guess the wheelbase would be out towards the outer edges. And it would be all right. But I wouldn't mind having a center support. And I'll add that once I get this, I guess. Go from there. That one on the other side, and we'll come out good, man. For this end, anyways. The one railroad tie underneath. I want to get all this road fabric underneath here, but it's all kind of bunched up with, um, you know, uh, rocks and and material that it got dumped upon. So I'm going to need to get inside and get a shovel and stuff. No big deal. I will uh, lower this back down. You can see it's lifted it up quite a bit. I mean. All, you know more than halfway back in the container because you know there between those two yellow stickers is center and it's lifted up all the way back to here so it's got quite a bit of weight so it'll be interesting to see how the physics work out with that with um lifting from the other end once i have this side jacked up i would imagine the first few jacks are going to be quite a bit of an oomph and then once things are going you get leveled out and and beyond it'll work out fantastic so all right, I'm gonna lower this down on a railroad tie and then get in there, get my shovel, a few things, and then work on that, that uh, road fabric and then we'll attack the other end. All right, gonna lower it back down. I, I do not like how the railroad tie on the right is set, but I can't do anything without some tools. So I'm gonna set it down on there briefly, shovel and whatever else maybe I need, readjust that railroad tie and then lower it down. It's actually settling down on them pretty darn even. So, I don't need 
that probably lower that a few more clicks just so there's clearance to get it out of there. Not light, as you can imagine. Put that down in there. Door still functions, so it didn't bend it all out of, stored it all out of shape. So I'm kind of thinking, I know that one needs to go over to the right more to make me happy. I mean, it's making contact pretty much the entire railroad tie, but I would just feel better if it was centered on the surface. I'm going to throw a level on there too, just for fun and see if it's high on one side. And if so, make sure it's not ridiculous. A little bit is fine because it helps the water drain off, you know, all the snow melt and ice that freezes as that happens. But uh, I'm going to do a little adjusting here and we'll do the other side. So just for fun, as is, I threw a level on there. Let's see what we got here. I mean, it doesn't really get much better than that. I don't like where that railroad tie is for a few reasons. One, you know, access for fork truck or something if I were to move it. it may not matter. But I'll lift the other end up first and get it, you know, squared away on the other end. And then I'll come back and check this and see how I feel about it. And I may or may not mess with that. I mean, it's got good purchase under there. It's not centered like I would like it to be, but... You know, where's it going to go? A few inches to to some gravel and one corner? I don't think so. These things are pretty rigid. Um, I could probably put railroad ties under three corners and, and it would probably be pretty solid. So anyways, we'll, uh, we'll get this all sorted out and I'll move the jack to the other end and we'll hit that side. All right, all hooked up on the other end. Yeah, that other, the first end was pretty level. But again, I'm, I'm gonna probably jack it up and just bang that railroad tie out to the edge with a, a sledgehammer or something. We'll jack this end up and uh, get some railroad ties under it and that'll be that. All right, I'll rest railroad ties under there and lower it back down and see how level we are. One down, one to go. All right, so just because I have them and I can, I'm sure it would be fine spanning those railroad ties the way it is. But I have more, and I'm going to put one in the middle on each side. But uh, I'll do that, and then I'll check back in with you. All right, so I got six under there now. One at each corner, and then one in the middle on each side. I'm going to lower it back down, and we'll see how it sits, and then I'll probably adjust that one up front again. This one here in the middle looks a little crooked, though. When you look at it from the top, it looks okay, but... So we'll see how it lands, throw the level on it, and then I'll adjust that one up front and call it good. But hopefully if you decide to do this yourself, it goes as well for you. I had the, a little bit of an advantage of the ground being somewhat level because I had a dozer in here and did a skim cut, you know, took all the stuff out of the moss and growth off the top of the gravel. And this is a pretty established gravel pad from decades ago, well packed and settled. So just kind of had to level it off a little and then we dropped the container here so now it was just a matter of getting it up so leveling it wasn't as much of a challenge but if i had to you know i'd just shim it with more wood other wood i don't know that those other ones in the middle are necessary it makes me feel better you know i have put my truck in here in the past and you know you just if there's going to be any flex or sag or anything you got that little extra support so we'll lower it down now need a hammer to put the jack in a different mode into lowering mode Let's see here. It's lowering. It's touching that railroad tie on my right already. I 
we got about an inch here. Yeah, it's going down. And it's getting easier now with some of the weight off. Of there. Yeah, there's nothing on it. It just didn't slip because I didn't bring this all the way down to engage it. It's free. So that's that. Well, so anyway, there you go. I'm going to backfill that with the same material that's on the driveway around it and probably put a little bit of a grade on this side closest to us here to help with water flow flow away. I'm sure it's still going to fill up underneath there, but it's not going to go higher than the driveway, so it'll always be out of the water. And then in the spring, I got to throw a few of those mosquito dunks in there. Otherwise, it's going to be a mosquito farm. But, you know, it's not making contact 100% on the railroad ties all over, but as things settle and expand and contract throughout winter, I bet you it's making great contact in the spring next year after winter. And plus with my back filling, I probably overkill with six railroad ties, but I had them and that was the reason I got them. So I wanted to use them and I still want to, I'm going to build a little ramp in the front there. And, but otherwise it's, uh, I'm pretty content with that. So that jack did the job, man. I'd say I'd like to have one of those, but I don't know how often it's gonna be that I would have a purpose, you know, other than this. So, check out the bubbles. See what's going on there. Set this here for just a second. And I'll check out the level inside the door there. And then I'm gonna mess, mess with this one, but you guys don't need to see that. It's pretty darn good. I mean, it's a tad high on the left, but it's within the center, you know, lines. It's a little high on the left, not too much. Let's see here. You know, I lift that up about a hair and it levels out. It's good to have some drainage on there. So anyways, hope you found that interesting, entertaining, whatever, inspiring. <laughs> a, if you're thinking about doing it yourself, have at it, man, if you can get your hands on one of those jacks. Like I said, I'm just gonna jack up this middle again and pound that right railroad tie a little more centered. It'll just make me feel better. And I don't know if you see, there's a four wheel, four wheeler there. That's one I've got a ton of videos on. Well, not a ton, but quite a few videos on the channel as well. If you're a Polaris person and looking for some fix it stuff as well as a bunch of Alaska related stuff and then other random DIY stuff. Every once in a while, whenever I do something that I think people might find interesting or unique or and I think it's worth sharing. That's what I do. Anyways, so thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And maybe we'll see you on the next one.